Hey everyone, welcome back. For today's video, I want to take a look at a really interesting topic, or what I believe is a really interesting topic anyway, and that is what the Death Eaters thought about the birth of Harry Potter, the prophecy, what it meant, who it would affect, and how things could change. Something that was making a strong impact on the Dark Lord's ranks was the belief that Harry Potter was not only born with the power to defeat the Dark Lord, but was also going to be the one to replace him, to take his place. That is absolutely crazy to even consider, but it is true and can you imagine if Harry actually became the new Dark Lord? That's even more crazy, but it could have happened. Anyway, let's take a look at how all of these beliefs or concerns, depending from what side you're on, came about. So, Voldemort, as we all know, is the most powerful dark wizard of all time. He's looked upon as far worse than Grindelwald ever was. At least, that man genuinely had the best interests of the wizarding world at heart, despite his unconventional methods. Anyway, Voldemort just wanted to be the king, the number one, the top dog, the be-all and end-all of everything that controls the magical sector. He goes on this campaign across Great Britain, gathering followers, convincing them that the time for change has come and you know what for a brief moment I think that's what he actually wanted to do but with the influx of dark magic ravaging his body yet boosting his power his mindset just changed for the worse. I know it's a well overused statement by now but he genuinely did push the boundaries of magic further than any wizard before him. He had become basically unrivaled in power and was amassing an army so vast so grand that it was only a matter of time before he achieved every single goal he set out to achieve. There was also the small, teeny tiny, very tiny additional fact of him being immortal. So let's fast forward to the beginning of a new decade, it's the 80s, the Death Eaters are about to win, the Order of the Phoenix is on its last legs, it's a final stand, and the only reason they lasted this long is due to Albus Dumbledore's great resilience. If you want to see a detailed video on why Voldemort actually feared Dumbledore, then please check out this video by clicking the card or clicking the option to view it at the end of the video. Anyway, let's continue. So Voldemort is on the cusp of victory until he's told of this prophecy. Well, half a prophecy by his servant Severus Snape which completely derailed the Dark Lord from literally achieving control over the Ministry. I mean, he could have continued, won his battle, like Harry wasn't going anywhere, he was barely just born. He could have secured his victory, then go after Harry. He obviously didn't do that and yeah, he disembodied himself and this is where things got interesting. The prophecy stated that the one with the power to vanquish Voldemort approaches, so the prophecy is obviously told to several Death Eaters and of course, word spreads throughout the ranks. Voldemort then disembodies himself and completely disappears. Now the question that everyone starts asking is, how did a baby, who couldn't even talk, bring upon the Dark Lord's downfall? Well, according to some, it was the universe's way of bringing balance by challenging Voldemort's immortality. Don't forget, he couldn't die, but this prophecy comes along and says, actually, you can, and this boy can enforce that. Then we have the other line of thought. A question, really. Was this boy set to defeat the Dark Lord and end his reign, or was he actually the Dark Lord's replacement? Was this Harry Potter the person to take the Death Eaters to unbelievable heights? Think about it, anyone who kills Voldemort is obviously going to have a lot of people talking. While certain Death Eaters like Bellatrix Lestrange, Barty Crouch Jr and Rebastian and Rodolphus Lestrange were all on a rampage trying to find their master, other Death Eaters like Lucius Malfoy tried to see the bigger picture and began to believe that this boy was the new Dark Lord, his replacement, Lord Potter if you will. This supports some of the reason as to why Lucius waited in the shadows and drew no attention to himself, claiming to be under the Imperious Curse. Some of you may know this and some may not, but Lucius encouraged Draco to befriend Harry, to get into Harry's good books. Obviously the boy's fame alone was a bonus but he knew that Harry himself was still trying to discover who he was, all the while everyone else had full knowledge of his situation. If Draco could somehow push Harry in the direction 
direction he wanted, then it could be hugely beneficial for everyone involved. It was only Lucius who felt like this. Many other Death Eaters questioned what Harry's role would be when he got older. Normally when it comes to villains, even in real life, the next up and comer steps in and challenges the current leader or boss and ultimately ends up betraying him or has him killed in order to seize power for themselves. So the jury was not out on Harry for some time. Draco was actually the first person to crack Harry's true persona when he had his friendship rejected by the boy. Instead of cashing in on his fame, Draco then ridiculed him for it, resulting in the two becoming bitter rivals. It's still really intriguing to think what would have happened if that was indeed the case? Harry Potter was the one to stop Voldemort, but the underlying truth was that he was actually his replacement. The issue with the Death Eaters and the huge amount of followers and the giants and the werewolves and all the creatures who were oppressed by the Ministry's rules and regulations is the fact that they all unified under Voldemort's leadership. Part of that was indeed leadership, but they remained in order through fear of the Dark Lord's wrath. After he fell, a lot of infighting began and not even Lucius Malfoy, the Dark Lord's second in command, could restore order and lead them to victory. So it's no surprise really that some or a lot of the Dark Lord's followers were hoping that Harry would be then the one to lead them to glory and bring upon the change to the wizarding world that so many of them craved. Just for humor's sake, let's actually take a look at some of the changes that would happen if Harry actually did become the new Dark Dark Lord. Let's just entertain this for a moment. I think it would be fun to establish a hypothetical scenario and don't worry I'm not going to rewrite the seven books with Harry as the Dark Lord. I still don't think that Harry would be anything like Voldemort for starters but here's a point I really want to get across. I believe Harry would slowly transition into his role. And just before I continue guys, I'm not going to go into great detail. As I said, it's just a brief, I'm not rewriting seven books here, so let's continue. Hermione would quickly pull away from Harry, knowing the stance that so many Death Eaters have on Muggleborns. Ron would be in two minds, however. I feel he would agree with Harry's plan to bring upon a positive change. The Hogwarts students would be split on with some believing that Harry is fulfilling his destiny and this is why he was the one who brought Voldemort's downfall. The others would think that Harry was going down the wrong path with Dumbledore emphasizing that Harry was making all the same wrong decisions that Tom Riddle once did. Don't forget nothing changes in terms of Voldemort's situation. He still exists. He's trying to return to power. He's still desperate to return. The only difference between the original story and this one is the fact that two wizards will fight over the Death Eater forces, which would be a really cool take on the situation. Now I know what you're thinking, Dean, you're talking absolutely crazy and yeah, maybe I am, so I will stop there for now. But how about this, if you all would like to see me make a full, detailed video on what would actually happen if Harry did become properly evil and assume the title of the new Dark Lord then let me know in the comments section below and I promise you I will make it happen. Tell me your thoughts. The comment section seems to be no longer in jail and YouTube have stopped turning it off so good news even though I've done nothing to warrant it being turned off. But anyway, thanks for watching and remember happiness can be found even in the darkest of times as long as one remembers to click like on this video. See you soon.